Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Tech Motoring. On today's episode, we're going to be going over all of the settings that you can set in your Hyundai Ioniq inside of the gauge cluster. So on the right screen there, all those options that you can change and set up on the car, we're going to go over what they do and how they change the way the car drives. So hit that subscribe button and stay tuned because we're coming right back at you. All right, everybody, welcome back. So like I was saying, we're gonna be going over all those settings that you can set up in this vehicle. Now, this is a 2017 Hyundai Ioniq. Now, this is the first year of the Ionics, so it might be slightly different if you have an 18, 19, 20, 21. I'm not really sure if they change that much between those years, but if you do have a different setting or something in yours versus mine, that just means it's a different feature. Now, this is the ultimate package uh, the limited trim with the ultimate package in this vehicle. So it is the highest trim for the 2017 model. So there really shouldn't be anything missing as far as this year goes, but we're gonna go over all those settings and exactly what happens when you adjust those. What does it do for you as the driver and what does it do for the car when it's on its dynamic radar cruise control? So we're gonna go over all those options and also the convenience and the security and safety features as well. So let's take a look, let's turn the car on and see what we can adjust. Okay, so here we are looking at the dashboard. Now this is gonna be on the right side of the dashboard, you have the gauge that shows you your drive info stuff, um, your, your compass, your tire pressure, and then all the way to the right side is that little gear settings. And that is actually what we'll be working with today. So let's start off from the top. At the very top, you see driving assist. So this is mostly features that are going to be for the cruise control and different ways that the car is going to handle certain situations. So we click on that one. Okay, so we see it says smart cruise control response. So this setting is actually the response that the car is going to have when it is slowing down for the car in front of it and then it has to go back forward again. Now with slow, what that means is it's going to be you come up behind a car, it slows down. As that car in front of you pulls away, that's the response that it takes your vehicle to then go forward with that vehicle in front of you. Now, slow meaning that your car is gonna have a slow response to continue to move when the car in front of you moves, fast being that it's going to quickly take off a little bit more aggressively when the car in front of you moves. And of course, normal is going to be right down in the middle of those two. So this is sometimes handy depending on your environment when you don't want cars to cut in front of you, you know, coming off of a red light. You know, if you have the cruise control set and you start to go and you're, you're kind of crawling along a little bit too slow. If somebody cuts in front of you at the very last second, that could get really annoying. But if you have this set for fast, it should close that distance between you and that car in front of you a little bit quicker. It's still going to be on the safe side of things, probably not close to what you would normally do, but it's going to definitely close the gap a little faster than the slow setting. Okay, so the next setting is autonomous emergency braking. Now, this one is pretty much what it sounds like. It's just a checkbox. Do you want it on or do you want it off? So this is in the event that your car sees that you're coming up on an object or another vehicle at a of great speed and at first it's going to give you a warning it's going to say there's a car in front of you you should brake if for some reason you don't respond in time and you get too close to that car it will automatically apply the brake so you do not rear end that vehicle now keep in mind it will usually wait till the very last second and it doesn't necessarily guarantee you it's going to stop in time it's just going to stop an attempt to either minimize the damage between you and the car in front of you or hopefully maybe you won't hit the car in front of you and it will stop in time. So that is what the autonomous braking system does. So the next setting is the forward collision warning. Now this is very similar to the autonomous braking that we were just talking about in the last setting, but this is the warning. So this is the warning that you get before uh, you actually hit something. So this would be the actual beeping. So now the settings you get for this are late, normal, and early pretty much what it sounds like. Late being that it's gonna wait till you get closer to a car before it starts warning you. Early meaning that it's gonna warn you from a further distance away. So early is always good to have. However, it may just get a little bit obnoxious depending on how you drive and depending on where you live. Sometimes you live in an area where maybe it's you know city streets and you get a little bit closer to people because that's just the way the dynamic of the driving is in that area. 
but that is a setting you can adjust for those three settings, early, normal, and then late. Okay, the next is the rear cross traffic alert. So this is pretty much what it means is that anytime that you have the, the reverse engaged in your vehicle, you know, your backup camera is on, anytime it sees an object or a vehicle go across the back camera, it will actually sense that and it will beep and let you know that, hey, there is you know somebody there, there's somebody passing by you, so you should probably stop backing up at this point. Now this is different from cars that have the rear sensors that tell you how far you are from an object, but this is specifically just for cross traffic alerts. So if you're ever in a parking spot and you're backing out and somebody decides that they're going to just cut right behind you, this will beep at you as soon as they come within range of that sensor on the back of the vehicle. So if you ever have this go off on you, it's definitely a good idea to hit the brakes because it could be a person or a car coming through. And that setting is just an on or an off. There's no adjustments for those. Now the next one is blind spot detection. Now this one's always really good because this is blind spot as in your mirrors with the lights on it that glow orange when you get a car that's in your blind spot off of your sides of your vehicles off the corners. And what this does, this literally just turns on those lights to let you know that there is a vehicle there. And if you do hit a turn signal to go into that lane while there's a vehicle in your blind spot, it will actually trip a warning sound on the dashboard to let you know that there is indeed somebody there. Okay, so that's it for the driving assist features. So let's go back to the previous menu and work our way down to the next one in the list. Okay, so door. So this is pretty obvious. We're talking about the, the doors of the vehicle here. So let's see what settings we have for those. Okay, so auto lock. Now this is kind of a safety feature in some ways, depending on how you take it. Now it all depends on how you like to have this set up for your vehicle. Now what this basically gives you the option of doing is changing it either to enable on speed, which is about 10 miles per hour, or enable it on shift. So what that means is that either when you start driving, it will automatically lock the doors when you hit about 10 miles per hour, or it will automatically lock the doors the second you put it into gear, which is drive or reverse typically in this situation. So this way the doors are locked. I typically leave this on speed. So this way when I start rolling, the doors will lock once I hit about 10 miles per hour. Auto unlock. Okay, so same thing as auto lock, except the opposite. When do you want the car to automatically unlock? It's not so much of a safety concern when the car is stopped at this point. So you can actually just disable this feature completely or you can have it where you shift to park to unlock the doors, or you can have it when you finally turn off the vehicle to unlock the doors. Uh, once again, it could be a safety issue depending on if you feel more comfortable waiting till the car is completely turned off, or you can just have it where the car will unlock the doors when you shift to park. So this is dependent on really how you use your vehicle most often. Okay, and the last setting under door is the two press unlock. The two press unlock is actually with the key fob. So when you hit the unlock button and you unlock the door, it opens up either just the driver door the first time and then the second press, it opens all four doors. Or if you turn the feature off, one press of the unlock and it will unlock all four doors. Now this will also work the same with the button on the door handle, which if you hit the button, only the driver door will unlock. You hit the button twice, all four doors are unlocked. And of course, if you turn this feature off, the same outcome of all four doors will lock with the first hit of the button on the door. Moving on to lights. This is probably one of my favorite customizable features in this vehicle. One touch turn signal. Now this is very common in a lot of vehicles. You just tap the turn signal down a little bit and it doesn't lock in. But what it does is it just does a delayed uh, one, two, three turn signal so you can get over a lane or so. But I always felt like three is usually not enough. And three is typically the standard for most vehicles nowadays. But the fact that they allow you to actually customize this in this vehicle is really cool. So your options here are just off if you don't want it to be multiple turn signals. Uh, three, five, and seven flashes. Now I think this is really cool because depending on your environment, sometimes you want a little bit longer of a change. Now I keep mine on five because I feel like five is probably pretty good. Four would probably be ideal, but five is fine. Three just seems a bit short. By the time you give somebody the notice that you're coming over, you're already three turn signals in. So I like having five flashes for me for when I'm doing a quick lane change. Seven flashes seems a bit long, but hey, we all have our options, which is why this is cool to see this as an option in this vehicle. Now the next feature is headlamp delay. 
Now this headlamp delay feature is actually kind of nice. It's more of like a courtesy feature. So when you get home at night, let's say, and it's dark outside and you park your car, when you turn the car off, it will keep the headlights on for a period of about five minutes or when you get out of the car and close the door. When you close the door, the vehicle it then has a 15 second timer in which the headlights will eventually turn off. That's a nice feature because if you park, let's say in your driveway and your headlights stay on, it kind of gives you a lit path for you to walk while you're walking to your house if you aim the car in that direction. Of course, it's easier for people to see you walk out in front of your car at night as well. Now, the next feature is the welcome light. So these are multiple lights that are scattered about the car on the outside of the vehicle, and they will actually turn on when you either approach the vehicle or you hit the unlock button on it. Now, there's a couple lights if your car is equipped with them underneath the mirrors, which are your puddle lights. They also turn on the front and the rear lights of the vehicle as well. And these are just called the welcome lights, which allows you to have a little bit of light around your vehicle as you approach it at night. So that's it for lights. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so here we are in convenience. Now this is pretty cool. Some of these features are really neat and a lot of times you need the higher trims in order for these features to be available to you. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. So the first setting is the seat easy access. Now this is when you turn off your vehicle and the seat actually goes back a little bit to allow you to get in and out of the vehicle easily. Now there's three different settings for this. There's either off, there's normal, and then there's extended. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Off means the seat won't move when you turn your vehicle off. Normal means it'll move back a certain amount. And then extended means it'll move back probably all the way as far as it can go for you to get in and out of the vehicle easily. Next feature is wireless charging. Now the Hyundai Ioniq has a wireless charger built into the center console here. And this is useful if your phone has wireless charging built in. You can just slide it into the console and it will wirelessly charge. Now this feature can be toggled on and off depending on whether or not you even need the feature or not. I'm not really sure why they even offer this as an option to turn it on and off. I don't know if it uses a little bit of electricity to be in uh, like a standby mode almost. Okay, the next setting is the wiper lights display. And what this means is that every time you change a setting, either it be on the light stalk or on the wiper stalk, you'll see a, an update on the screen. So if you change the adjustment of your wipers a little faster or a little faster, you'll see it change on the screen in real time. So this way it kind of gives you a, like a heads up display of exactly what setting you're on. Because sometimes it's hard to tell just from, you know, turning it what setting you're on. And uh, that's why they make it a little easier for you to see on that display. Similar setting here, gear position pop-up, meaning that anytime you change the position of the gears in the vehicle, meaning if you go from park to drive, neutral, drive, park, neutral, any of those combinations, when you move from one gear to the other, it will pop up on the screen in the middle and let you know that you move to a different gear. Okay, so that's it for convenience. So let's go back and take a look at the last couple ones we have. Okay, so service interval. So this is a little different because depending on your vehicle, whether or not you have a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid or just an EV, but this option here allows you to set up the intervals in which you need service, whether it be every 3,000 miles, 5,000 miles, 10,000 miles, whatever it is. So in here, you can actually turn on the interval service, number one, and then you can adjust the actual intervals, uh, how many thousands of miles in between each service. And then of course you have the option to reset those intervals if you need to. So now we have other features, which is just a bunch of miscellaneous features that don't get really categorized into any of the previous ones. Let's take a look at what's in here. Okay, auxiliary battery saver. Now this is a really cool feature of the Ionic. Now, if you don't know, there's two batteries on an EV. There is the 12 volt battery that sits under the hood like you have on pretty much every single car ever made. And then there's the high voltage battery that, you know, is what drives the vehicle with the power. Now, the 12 volt battery is what maintains everything running in your vehicle, like your, your, your lights, your dashboard, your everything that runs off of 12 volts comes off of that battery. Now, the big battery charges that battery. But with a lot of EVs, when the car is turned off, the high voltage battery doesn't actually charge the 12 volt battery. Well, the cool thing about the Hyundai Ionic is they actually built in the safety mechanism where if the 12 volt battery starts to dip down below a certain threshold, it will actually kick on the high voltage battery to recharge the 12 volt battery. 
So if you ever have to park your car for a long amount of time, let's say, you know, a few weeks at an airport or a couple months over the course of a season, you know, your 12 volt battery will continue to top itself off at the cost of your high voltage battery, which is so big anyway, it's not really gonna take all that much to charge that small 12 volt battery that you have under the hood. So that's an awesome feature that this car does have. And I have seen it work before. And typically what you do is if it ever kicks in, you'll actually see an icon when you first start the car again that says, auxiliary battery saver mode has been activated or something along those lines. And it actually will show you that it was used. Now the next feature is energy consumption reset. Now what this feature does is it gives you the ability to reset the energy consumption of your vehicle either after you finish charging it or after uh, every time you turn the ignition off. And this kind of gives you a baseline of exactly where you were as far as your energy consumption was for either that trip that you just took or since the last time you charged your vehicle. The next feature here is speedometer subscale now this one confused me for a while until i realized i just turned it off and i realized what it was was it actually was turning on the kilometers per hour this being a united states car we use miles per hour it actually turns on the kilometers per hour in a small little uh spot in the middle of the screen on the gauge so you can actually see both of them at the same time you have the option of turning it off and then this way you don't get bothered by having two different speed indicators on your dashboard the next one is temperature unit, which obviously you can change your temperature Celsius or Fahrenheit, depending on how you prefer. And then of course, the last one is tire pressure unit. So you can change the unit of how your tire pressures are reported to you. So you can either have it in PSI, you can have it in KPA, or you can have it in bar, all depending on what you prefer for your area. Obviously here in the United States, we typically prefer PSI. And last but not least, the last option we have is reset settings, which will reset all the settings back to the default as if the day you bought the car or the day the car was brand new, I should say. And you can just start fresh. If for some reason any of these settings in your vehicle you don't like and you can't figure out what you changed or what you did, you can always hit the reset settings and start from scratch and set them all back up again. It really doesn't take you too long, probably about as long as this video does, probably a lot shorter actually. but. You can go ahead and now have some confidence when setting up all of these settings in your Hyundai Ioniq. Like I said, there might be some that I'm missing only because my vehicle may not have those features if you have a newer Hyundai Ioniq. Um, this particular year, the 2017, doesn't have the auto lane centering in it. So there might be options in there I won't see because this vehicle doesn't have that. So keep that in mind that you may actually have some extra features I do not have. But anyway, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I obviously own a Hyundai Ioniq, so I do a lot of videos on it. And if you have a Hyundai Ioniq, go ahead and tell me about it in the comments below. Are there any videos specifically that you wanna see on the Hyundai Ionics? Let me know and I'll try to shoot those videos for you. And also you can click on a couple of these links. I'll put them up here in the corners of the screen here. And you can click on some of these Hyundai videos as well. And it kind of gets you updated with some of the videos I've already done. Well, I'd like to thank you once again for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Please check us out on our website, techmotoring.com. On Twitter at techmotoring. Facebook.com slash techmotoring. Thank you very much again for watching. And remember, welcome to the future and welcome to techmotoring. And we will see you on the next episode.